You're missing the Garden of the Gods. Huh? Over there. That's Pike's Peak. Ahead of us is Balanced Rock. That steamboat rock on the right. Oh, the rocks are all so red. That's how the state gets its name. In this tour to write a thesis for my image degree, in our state, teachers get for traveling. So you can teach geography better? So we can teach everything better. The more we get around and see the country, the more we know what makes America tick. open his eyes for hours? Shh, he'll think you're trying to, to... Well, I am. <laughs> Dad. Mr. Williams. Yes, ma'am. Did you see the balance rock back there? No, ma'am, I must have dozed off. We well, ought to stay awake. You miss a lot. Such as what, ma'am? Well, they say there are a lot of wild Indians around here. Well, I'll see plenty of wild Indians when we get to Gallup. If the tribal dances are still on. Tribes here from all over the West. Gee. Oh, look! There's another kind of dance. I wonder what kind that is. Could you tell us what dance that is? Butterfly dance, ma'am. They sing butterflies as the spirits of their departed ancestors. the two girls that were sitting here. Well, I think I know where they are. I'll get them. Thanks. That's the sun, moon, and star dance. <laughs> Gets them all in at once, huh? They're not taking any chances slighting any of them. It's their prayer for abundant crops, long life, and happiness. You gals better get a move on if you don't want to miss your bus. Oh, our bus! So you're going to Spokane? Yeah. And you're going to Pendleton to be in the rodeo? Yes, ma'am. Roundabout like. I had to see a man back in Gallup. You boys like traveling? Yeah, especially this way. You can see a lot. And you can always catch a bus. So I noticed. <laughs> but I thought a cowboy always rode his horse every place he went. They do, ma'am, but my horse is a regular homebody, so I make the long trips by myself. Of course, I send him postcards along the way. <laughs> 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 Let's stop here for lunch, folks. You know, ma'am, 
I was right pleasantly surprised. What do you mean? Well, you actually smiled a few moments ago. On you, it looked good. Thank you. Uh, careful, ma'am. Uh, honey, I just know what I'm talking about. He likes you. That's silly. Sight is too fresh. Hello. Mind if we share the table? Oh, of course, honey. Two's company, three's a crowd, and four's just right. <laughs> well, move over, me. Thanks. Hey, what are you eating? Raw grapefruit. Tastes good. I've never heard of it before. Well, you ought to come down our way and have some spiced kumquat. Where's that? On the way down from Miami to Key West. There's where you go to sea by bus. It's a fabulous highway shooting right out over the ocean for more than a hundred miles. Like I told Amelia, she's just got to have that in that theme she's riding. Bridges carry you from one tropical island to another. Keys, they call them. I don't know why. Key is the Spanish word for Ireland. Oh. Well, halfway down is Greyhound Key. That's a nice spot to stop off, especially if you like deep sea fishing. house there serves the yummiest dishes like baked bonefish and key lime pie. I've eaten in post houses all the way from New England. Riding a bus, you get to sample the special dishes of the country you travel through. Well, I ride a bus because it's more fun. Right now, I'm on an expense paid tour. On a tour? Where's the rest of your party? Oh, well, that's the way they do it with Greyhound. You can travel alone or in a group and go where you please. You see, the whole trip is planned before you leave. They even make hotel reservations, if you like. Of course, I was practically raised on a bus. You see, I was born in Minnesota. That's where Greyhound started, between two little towns, Alice and Hibbing. Up to then, the fare was a dollar and a half one way. So they started this first bus line and charged 15 cents. Doesn't surprise anyone up there how this bus business has grown. Greyhounds run in every one of the 48 states now. And Canada, too, I'm putting that in my thing. Whatever gave you the idea for this theme you're writing? Well, one of my favorite poems is Henry Van Dyke's. It's home again, home again, America for me. My heart is turning home again, and there I long to be. In the land of youth and fruit beyond the ocean bars, where the air is full of sunlight and the flag is full of stars. So, my thesis is titled, America for Me. Well, ma'am, you're sharper than untold. Yeah, give us an educated for instance. Well, for instance, I've written up one of the oldest festivals on Earth, and it's celebrated in this country. The Mardi Gras. It started 5,000 years ago among the Greeks and Romans to welcome spring. When the early Christian church decreed the 40 days of Lent, it was made the period of fun and feasting just before Lent. Since it comes just Ash Wednesday, it was named Fat Tuesday by the French, who brought the celebration to this country. Fat Tuesday in French is Mardi Gras. I don't know when anyone sleeps that whole week but it's something you'll never forget the rest of your life. And while you're talking about shindigs, don't forget the big rose festival up our way. You mean a Pasadena? No, doggone it. I mean Portland, Oregon, the city of roses. It's right next to Mount Hood. They can put on a rose festival and a ski carnival the same day. You haven't seen America till you've seen the Northwest. I was sure going to see part of it on our way to the Canadian Rockies. Say, Tex, haven't you got anything to brag about in your part of the country? Well, now, ma'am, that's a right ornery thing to say to a man from Texas. A state so big that some of the counties are bigger than some states. Now, you take my hometown, San Antonio. 
About half our town is as Mexican as Chihuahua. Half is as Western as the Chisholm Trail, and just across the street is another half as North American as Chicago. Isn't that three halves? Ma'am, in Texas, everything is big enough to have three halves. And of course, we have the Alamo. You, you know the old saying, remember the Alamo? We remember it with a San Jacinto Fiesta every year. Yes, that's pretty. But do you know what I remember most of all about San Antonio? It's that little old twisty river that winds in and out all through the town. And you meet the best looking soldiers. San Antonio's been an army post for several hundred years. Anyway, I met one and we went for a boat ride on the river. It was terribly romantic. Oh, you and your romance. Hey, we better get back to our bus. Well, I guess we won't be seeing you boys tomorrow. And me and I are going to stay over when the bus stops at sunset and take the 8 o'clock in the morning, aren't we? Uh, that's funny. Uh, we're going to do the same thing. Yeah, what a coincidence. Seat, aren't you? Well, I thought the other young lady would like to sit with Chuck this morning. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, ma'am, it's a big country. Yes, ma'am, it's a powerful big country. It's a little overpowering. I prefer New England. You know, I, I never been to New England. The furthest east I ever got was Michigan. Isn't Michigan a long way from Texas? Don't you try to get a long way from home for your vacation? You know, they call Michigan the water wonderland. Whether you're skimming along in a boat or lazing on the bank or, or fishing for some of their game fish. You know, that's my idea of a vacation. It's nice, but I still prefer New England. Well, now, ma'am, if you'd tell me about it, maybe I'd agree with you. Well, up there you have the feeling of being at the birthplace. At the beginnings of America. That's where the pilgrims landed. On that same stern and rock-bound coast. When George Washington established the lighthouse service, the first lights were built in New England. It's a fascinating thing to take a tour of these famous landmarks. So many visitors come up there from all parts of the country. Lighthouses are so friendly and reassuring, and at the same time, so ageless. And along the way, the woods and templed hills, the same that watched the pilgrims gathering for the first Thanksgiving, and Ethan Allen's boys marching to meet the Redcoats. You eat in places that were old before there was a United States, such as Lyman Howe's Red Horse Tavern. Later, it became Longfellow's Wayside Inn. Once, this was the first overnight stop of the stagecoach out of Boston. It was a day's run then. In today's coach, it is only a matter of minutes. Through its hospitable front door, travelers have been entering into its welcome for, for almost 300 years. Ma'am, you're, you're downright poetical. That sounds like right nice country. 
Oh, I, I didn't mean to get carried away. Hey, looks like Tex is finally melting down your friend a little. Uh, I have a lot about New York in my theme. In fact, I could have done a whole paper on it. Just to stand on top the Empire State Building and look down. To me, it's another Grand Canyon. Up our way, teachers take their pupils down to New York every year in charter buses. Another favorite spot to take them is Washington, D.C. In my theme, I say one of the best times to go is cherry blossom time, when all the buildings and monuments are given a fairyland quality. The spot I like especially to go is Mount Vernon. No matter how often you go, from the moment you step on the ground, you, you actually feel the presence of Washington. The house and grounds look today exactly as they did when George and Martha lived there. Say, do you sleep in those specks? I beg your pardon? I mean, can you see without them? Of course I can. I only wear them when I travel. Why, they're pretty. What are? Your eyes. Say, you know, I'll bet if you cut or fluffed up your hair or something, you'll be powerful handsome. Hey, Tex. Your next chance to send your horse a postcard will be San Francisco. Yeah. Now, wait till you see San Francisco. I'll show you how to open up that Golden Gate. And what a sight it is. The Golden Gate Bridge and Oakland Bay. You know, it's like a fella said once. These Americans, they think everything they have is the biggest or the longest or the tallest. And it usually is. I think some of us brag much. Our country? Shucks, I don't. It's just our way of telling her we love her. You know, when I get married, I'll be telling my wife that she's the sweetest little woman and the best cook in the world. You think she ain't gonna like that? Well, as I was saying about San Francisco, ma'am, you'll want to be sure and see Twin Peaks, and Telegraph Hill. It wouldn't be San Francisco without us and Chinatown. Fisherman's Wharf is one place you'll have to go. When you see how they dish out the shrimp, you'll know for sure this is the land of plenty. And there's Market Street with the ferry building at the lower end. For a real view of the city, you gotta go way up to the top of the mark. And speaking of something high, I suppose you know that tomorrow we'll be seeing the oldest and the highest. Well, anyway, we'll be seeing the redwoods. Then you say what they are. Hard to believe, aren't they? They're so doggone big, I don't see why they ain't in Texas. Well, honey, if and they wasn't gone big, we'd show sure enough moving for you. Well, now, thanks, partner. If one of you girls had changed seats with one of us, we could see how big they are on both sides. All righty. No, thank you. Amelia, honey, I don't understand you at all. He's so nice and, well, you're not very nice to him. He's too forward. I don't like that type of man. Well, you won't have to put up with him much longer. He's changing for Pendleton tomorrow. Well, I'm really not interested in what he does. But he...
Chuck. Hi, uh, what time should bus leave, Tex? Oh, pretty soon now. Did you see those Indian earrings I wanted to buy? They were very attractive. Oh, why, look, they're the boys. Why, hello there. Honey, ma'am. Tex was wondering if he'd see you two before he left. Oh, I'm awful sorry you have to leave, Tex. Uh, so am I, Taffy. Excuse me. Well, that's the most cold to brush off I ever had in my life. Well, ma'am, well, uh, I'll be leaving the party soon. Goodbye, Mr. Williams. No, I don't know why, but I sure seem to rub you the wrong way. If I've said anything wrong, I'm downright regretful. But I'll tell you one thing. I've seen a lot of females, but you take the silver-plated spurs for being the cussedest. Put that in your theme. about the Columbia River in your theme? Uh, no, not yet. Say, I can help you with this part. We're following the old Oregon Trail. People say it's the most picturesque 70 miles of highway in the United States. When I hit this stretch, I know I'm almost home. You girls staying in Spokane tonight? Yes, the Greyhound bus people made reservations for us. We like to stop overnight and travel daytimes. You see so much more that way. Tomorrow we go to Canada. Oh, I can hardly wait. Why do you the United States before? Will you send me a postcard? Let me know how you like it. Okay, I will. Say, that's just like Tex writing postcards to his horse. Wasn't that cute? sound of me, I wrote it to Chuck. Dear Chuck, have been riding through Canada all day long and the scenery is scrumptious. Tomorrow, Banff and Lake Louise having a wonderful time. Love, Taffy. You do have a wonderful time, don't you, Taffy? <laughs> well, I aim to. <laughs> imagined it to be. It's pretty. Absolutely dreamy. It's nice. Well, what's the matter with you? What do you mean? Oh, look, honey, we've been here for three days, and what have you done? Absolutely nothing but sit around and moon all day. Well, you haven't written one word in your theme. You know what I think? I think the teacher ought to sit in the corner for being such a dunce. I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Look, you cut your hair. Why don't you let it down? Oh, Taffy, I knew I was, but I just couldn't do anything about it. Somehow we always got my goat. I'm going home tomorrow. 
Guess I missed it. The bus alone. I wish I could thank you, Taffy, but there's nothing anyone can do now. It's been wonderful, Taffy. Oh, Amelia, I wish you could stay all week with me. I do, too, but I have to get back. I want to see my aunt in Chicago before I go home. You be sure and write me, you hear? Of course I will, Taffy. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, and good luck. Goodbye. Maybe something good will happen. I said, maybe something good will happen before you get home. Bye. Bye. Hello, hello, operator. He's connected with the rodeo there in Pendleton. Oh, you have him? Hello, Tex. This is Taffy. Michigan Avenue, next stop, Greyhound Terminal, Chicago Loop. Sorry, ma'am. Excuse me. Excuse me. What? What's the matter, boss? Miss your bus? Uh, is it 2.30 in from the west yet? Yes, sir. And unload it. Is there another section coming in today? Not today, sir. Well, I guess you're right. I sure missed the bus. Did you miss me, too? Amelia. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. You don't get away from me again. But, but how did you... Come on, let's get out of here where we can talk. So when Taffy phoned me in Pendleton, I knew I had to head you off. I still wasn't sure about you, but when I saw your hair all fluffed up and no specks, I knew I was right. Oh, you were right, Tex. Well, now, my ranch ain't the biggest... I mean, isn't. I have to watch my English now that I'm marrying a school teacher. Well, it isn't the biggest in the world, but it's all mine. With you there to help me, it's going to seem a lot bigger. But what about my teaching? My master's degree? My theme? Well, you can teach me from now on, honey. And you won't have to write a theme. We're going to live one. Just as soon as we can get a license hitched. I mean, married. <laughs> Taffy a wire telling her about us? Sure did. Even sent my horse another postcard from Niagara Falls, telling him we were on our way home. <laughs> we're rolling along the highway. There is very adventure in every wonderful mile. We're gliding along the byway, lighthearted and green streamlined sky. As we travel over the countryside, there's romance Good old USA in the most convenient way. It makes a glamorous trip. 